All right, so the next lightning talk uh, and the last one for, for this uh, before we break for lunch is uh, SKA, it's so an amazing scientific experiment and we'll be hearing a lot about it. So, yeah. Hi, hello, uh, I'm Ego Yilmaz and today I'll be talking about clouds. Oh, wait, uh, that's not right, yeah, I'll be talking about space, uh, in, in particular SKA Observatory where we are doing next generation radio astronomy driven big data. And I know that I am the talk that's keeping you from having lunch, so I'll try my best to be quick about it. So, uh, we are trying to build uh, one observatory, two telescopes, uh, one in South Africa, one in Western Australia, uh, on three continents uh, as an intergovernmental organization. Uh, you can see the member countries on the map there. Uh, and our mission is to build and operate uh, cutting edge radio telescopes to transform our understanding of the universe. So. Why, what do I mean by that? Uh, to, to understand that, uh, our uh, first idea was to investigate uh, neutral hydrogen uh, in space, which is only visible in radio frequencies. So, uh, for example, you can see in these pictures there are three isolated galaxies, but if you look, look at them in hydrogen, you can see that they are interacting with, with each other. They are connected, uh, maybe part of a larger structure, so that's, why, uh, that's what we wanted to investigate science-wise. So, so we are trying to look at the hydrogen all the way from uh, uh, from the present day on the right hand side, uh, uh, right back to the very soon after the beginnings of the universe on the left, uh, uh, with two telescopes uh, because uh, because of the radio frequency differences, and we need an incredibly large collection of uh, collection area to uh, get uh, this many data, and uh, hence our name SK Square Kilometer Area comes from. Uh, we are very great at naming things. Uh, and with great collection area comes great computing power needs, uh, which I want to focus today. Uh, so going a little bit more into details about our data processing needs, uh, we are aiming to have uh, uh, producing huge amounts of data. You can see that we are talking about uh, petabytes or uh, terabytes per second uh, of raw data coming to our first uh, uh, signal processor facility and then outputting uh, 9 terabyte uh, per second of data to be processed in our science, uh, science data processors, which will then be have to be shared with the actual scientists in the member countries over, over internet, which uh, we are uh, aiming to uh, saturate the link uh, all the way here. Uh, uh, if we want to uh, talk a little bit more about numbers, uh, that's more in line with the HPC scale. Uh, and I have selected a couple of high priority science objectives here. We have 12 of them uh, in total, but you can see that if you focus on the first one that I mentioned uh, early in the beginning, uh, we are talking about uh, over 40 petaflops uh, per second compute power that we need to just uh, process uh, just one of our science goals, uh, which uh, also means that we will be generating a lot of data. Uh, a disclaimer here is uh, I'm told by our scientists that all the numbers in this table are estimates with high error rate, but the truth is uh, we will need a supercomputer, so one or two, to, uh, to, to process this data in real time. And I, I did want to focus on uh, uh, these large numbers to highlight the end game so that uh, you know that we are aiming for stars. In reality, we are grounded uh, because we are ground-based uh, uh, radio telescopes, uh, pun intended there. So how do we do that? How are we developing our systems? Uh, we are doing it with cloud native and open source principles in mind. On the right hand side, you can see that uh, we have a, a layered platform approach that's based on OCI images uh, to standardize all of our environments across the globe uh, because we will have these environments in each uh, member country and we are focusing on web-based control and monitoring uh, which will also help us uh, insulation for hardware vendors because we, as I said we will need supercomputers, we don't still know them. Uh, and uh, one other point is we want to, to have a simplified API with clear separation between layers so that uh, many different teams from many different cultural backgrounds can work on them together. And we want to resist the urge for uh, doing anything special uh, because uh, the observatory will be operational for more than 20 years. So we will have to maintain the system for more than 20 years. So we want to keep it simple. 
Currently, the current numbers are not uh, that impressive. Uh, currently, we have two main clusters uh, for uh, the main software development work. Uh, one is the CI/CD cluster that's serving 25 teams around the world. That's also our runners, Binder Hub notebooks, uh, uh, different integration staging environments, cloud development environments, our logging and monitoring stack. This is also replicated a little bit on an AWS cluster. And we have a, a data processing uh, clusters uh, with GPUs, specialized hardware, uh, others, uh, uh, FPGAs, TPMs, uh, that is mostly used with a very large nodes, uh, so that we can do exploratory and prototype uh, sciencing. Uh, I need help in uh, resource management, job queuing, multi-tenancy, all the topics that's uh, been discussed here, so come find me or I'll try to find you. So thank you. Uh, you can see my contact details, and if you want to hear more, uh, Rohini will be uh, giving a talk, uh, a, a, a little bit more detailed talk on Thursday 11. Uh, so come and join us there as well. Thank you.